Hi there, this is Saul Chironan from Saul Chironan Films and welcome to another double take. Today's double take looks at the weird and wonderful world of Uchiha. Apologies to any Japanese speaking viewers. And this is Burning Buddha Man from 2013 and Violence Voyager from 2018. Um, Uchiha is not the director's real name, he got the moniker from a type of green tea. And this is Jackie Mation, Gecky Mation, which is essentially 2D hand drawn cutouts, essentially used as puppets on painted backgrounds. So, this is not your typical Japanese anime. Um, Uchiha was never that much of a fan of that kind of animation. These films are strange. This is a third window release and you could easily make a video on pretty much every third window release. Um, this is a really nice set. This is the artwork for the Burning Buddha Man. And this has special features of two short films Space Yokai War, which is 9 minutes, and The Retinoprac 2, which is 16 minutes. And you have Violence Voyager, the artwork for that is in the inside. And for Violence Voyager, you get the third short film, but you also get an interview. With Uchiha, which explains some of it. it, doesn't explain all. You also get a commentary by the director um, on Violence, Violence Voyager, which is quite hard to say, um, and you get a teaser for his third theatrical feature. Um, he also did um, a part of a 26 an alphabet anthology film as well. But he's only made two theatrical features and they're both included here. This is why I love Japanese cinema. Japanese cinema always shows you something that you think you think you've seen it all. And Japanese cinema is like, eh, no, you haven't. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the plots of these films. Um, because I probably just can't um, and also you need to watch them yourself I think both these films are ideally watched late at night obviously if you're used to animation in this Pixar age you could be perhaps it's maybe jarring to have these 2D cardboard cutouts essentially but once you get into the story once you try and figure out exactly what the hell's going on you forget about the animation style because you're just fully engrossed in it but again there's still a it's going to sound stupid but there's still a reality to it there's still a tactile element to the animation whereas with you know, Pixar and computer generated things, you can still have a distance between the audience and the actual images. Whereas for some reason, this geeky animation, you just get pulled in, even though, like I said, at first it might be a little bit jarring, the animation style. So Burning Buddha Man tells the the moving story of thefts of Buddha statues in Kyoto. Um, Beniko, a high school girl, visits her parents in one of the temples. Um, 
but her parents have been killed and I'm <laughs> trying to think of how to explain this um, they, they have been integrated with the Buddha statues there's an underground organisation that is stealing the statues but to undergo a transmogrification process of melding themselves with the Buddha statues to gain enlightenment to become something different. Strangely enough it um, reminded me it's a cross between Giger and um, Fantastic Planet. Um, there's lots of body horror. Um, there's it's very odd strangely enough. Um, that's about as far as I can go into the plot of Burning Buddha Man. It's still strangely moving in the fact that he also incorporates real liquids and goo out of the cardboard orifices and into the cardboard orifices. Again, it has that three-dimensional tactile feel to the films because he will have real goo coming from different places as opposed to just making all cardboard goo um, or cut out goo. There is a loose kind of well, it's a very loose frame of reality before the story actually starts and at the end um, a young woman sits down at a table watched by a man and she has the cardboard or the paper cutouts that would become the story again that's um, the director just introducing the idea of reality and non-reality even though the characters then become real and the film becomes our reality that's as well as I can explain it really um, which needs to say it isn't that well explained but you need to see these films because they are pretty amazing again once you get past the animation style or just getting used to the animation style um, it's wonderful the use of sound effects the use of like I say real life goo and body fluids flying everywhere um, it is a, a moving story of family and um, transmogrification and then five years later he would make Violence Voyager which he thought you know it would take a shorter time than it actually did it took five years it took about three years to actually make when he started because obviously you're dealing with all these hand-drawn animations and putting them all together um, so Violence Voyager tells the simple tale of Bobby who's an American now living in Japan with his parents his mother's bedridden, bedridden. his um, dad works all day um, and he has a friend um, and they seem to have been outcast slightly from the rest of the kids at the school his friend Akum and they want to go round the mountain um, next to their village to find their other friend who moved to that village and on one of their walks well there's also an old man who lives in a cabin old man lucky monkey who has a pet chimp it all makes sense kind of 
eventually. Um, and he warns them not to go around not to go around the mountain. They come across this sign for an amusement park called Violence Voyager. So they go in, but it turns out it's kind of like a spaceman shoot them up and they get um, wellingtons and waterproofs to protect them against the the alkali liquid that the invading robots um, fire at people but it turns out that this isn't necessarily a game it's totally real life and it goes back to the guy who runs the amusement park and an accident that happened to his son so very much like Les Yeux Sans Visage it's the story of a parent trying to right the wrongs of an accident that happened to their child by kidnapping, uh, mutating and using children as food. You know, it's it's an everyday story. We've seen it a million times. Um, again, that's pretty much as far as I'm going to go into the plot of Violence Voyager. Um, again, it's really rather um, creepy and disturbing you know, old man Lucky Monkey has an affection for the boy, the father's boy who had the accident to the scientist's boy. Um, he has a real fondness for his his underpants. There's a uh, Bobby has his pet cat helps out. Um, the chimp, owned by old man Lucky Monkey, um, and a bat. They become his allies. Again, if it wasn't Japanese, it kind of just wouldn't work. But for some reason, it just seems perfectly reasonable. And you root for little Bobby as he goes through his changes. Um, you know, the scientist who is using children for mutation experiments and using them as food. You know, you still understand his point of view. Um He's not like a two-dimensional two villain, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, and again, in the end, it's quite moving. You know, as we... You know, Bobby is now changed. And the narrator says, you know, he's going to face further challenge in his life. But you can do it, Bobby. And we're all we're all rooting for you, Bobby. Um, again, it's, it's quite moving. Um, both these films are under an hour and a half, but they absolutely fly by, because once you get sucked into that world, sometimes literally, the same way the characters do, again, Violence Voyager has lots of liquids and body fluids flying at the screen and out of their little cardboard orifices. They are colourful, they're beautifully created and made, um, and again, Third Window has hit it out of the park again. I mean, I've got a bunch of Third Window in my backlog. You could easily just continue to buy Third Window. Um, and again, the fact you get um, Uchiha's three short films, you get an interview with him, and there's a commentary by him on Violence Voyager. So you really get an idea of what's going through his mind um, for better or worse yeah another release that I would highly recommend if you're into animation or just Japanese cinema in general there are two wonderful films perhaps not for the squeamish but um, well worth a look-see so thank you very much for watching this double take let me know if you've seen Burning Buddha Man or Violence Voyager, what you thought of them. And hopefully you'll gen join me again for more double take videos. This is Solitary Ronin, slightly confused, from Solitary Ronin Films. Saying bye bye. <laughs>